Hello! It's been a while since I've uh, put out a video, but uh, I um, just thought I would finish off something I've been working on for quite some time. A while ago, I, um, my last video, I showed you some of the work I was doing on the large 24-inch telescope which was built by um, a chap, a friend of mine called John Wall. Now, John Wall, as I mentioned in the last video, was a very interesting chap because he um, was the inventor of the Crayford focuser. Now, that, uh, for a lot of people that won't mean anything, but if you're into astronomy and you have a telescope, it's almost certainly got a Crayford focuser on it. Now, John um, was a, a draftsman and, and design engineer at a company called um, um, called Vickers. And Vickers were uh, an armaments company uh, amongst other things, I mean they made um, all sorts of uh, industrial uh, machines, uh, packaging machines and all sorts of things, but um, the, the division he worked for was, was uh, ostensibly um, a, a, an armaments um, division. Um, whilst he was working there he invented this focuser and the company uh, weren't interested in the design so he decided that he would um, basically just um, publish his uh, his design and set it free, which which he did, and it's a very interesting story. And in fact, myself and Martin, who also appears uh, in this video, you'll see him in John's workshop. Um, Martin and I are making a video about uh, the invention and John's work, so hopefully um, you will see that soon. Uh, just very briefly, uh, I actually made one of his focuses. This is the focus that goes on my uh, large 10-inch uh, Ritchie Cretien. And this is a, a Crayford focuser. Um, it's a very, very simple design. Uh, it's very effective and, as I say, it's pretty much universal on all telescopes. All good quality telescopes have this type of focuser on them. Um, John is a very interesting chap. And he's in his 80s, he's 80, I think he's 82. And he still goes in his workshop pretty much every day. And he's operating, um, he's building focuses and he's inventing telescopes, he's just built a telescope which um, I'll probably um, do a video on because it's an interesting modern and new design um, uh, uh, and an interesting idea. Um, what, what Martin and I did is we visited his place and we had a look around his workshop so I did this really for people who are interested in in workshops and machining. Um, we get to have a look at a his lathe, which is an old rivet, uh, which is a nice old machine, and see the sorts of uh, methods and techniques that he uses for making his focuses. Um, as I say, he's in his workshop every day at the age of 82, and I just hope that when I'm 82, I'm still able to use these and get in my workshop. Uh, I'm sure we all do. So uh, let's zip over to uh, John's place and have a look around his, his workshop. Right. I've got all the telescopes stored in a special little storehouse just around the corner. Oh, right. There's no, there's no point going in there at all. Hmm. Just to package that. Yeah. Right. Now we are all cleaned up. Oh, look at this. It's looking very smart. Oh, yeah, it's had a clean. Ah, uh, is that... Is that it's in, in, usual state. <laughs> It's quite good when you get visitors because I do the same. I always tidy my workshop when I get someone coming around. I think, oh God, I can't bear to see people think yeah. think I live in this all the time. But it very quickly deteriorates when That's they leave. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Right, this is um. There's nothing going on here. What I was doing, I was working on a, a 90 millimeter hypo refractor. Yeah. I do it here, and I've taken it upstairs this morning for testing. Can't see anything of the guard here, it's too much jungle in the way. Mm. I don't like that. Do. This is uh, this is interesting. That is circa two years ago now. Mm. Oh, this is our building. Yeah. That yeah, completely different, isn't it? Yeah. It's a rack and, oh, rack and pinion, not not. It is a rack and pinion crane oh, Wow, it's a yeah. hybrid. It's a hybrid, yeah. Now, the um, the tube is supported in the usual way. It's got two rollers running on that plane, independent of the rack. Oh yeah, so it has. So, yeah, it's, it's, so it's actually a sandwich. So Crayford at the bottom, traditional. 
Yeah. And then and some spring loaded rollers. And you've got two rollers either side of the rack. Yeah. And they press down. Which is a bit like these steel track ones that they're now selling. Right. Yeah. Independent. Oh, I invented this. Yeah. I was thought of doing this for the very first Crayford. Really? Was, yeah. But I thought, no, we'll make it good simple. Yeah. Um, two rollers pressing down on there. And it's, it's independent of the pinion, totally independent. Mm. There's an adjuster inside, it presses a, a separate end of the carriage down, it presses the other side. So the pressure, on the, the kinematic pr balance and pressure on the tube is independent of the rack. Of course That's it is, yeah. And there's the, fo the focusing pinion, there's a, there's a rack and pinion, all the rack and pinion, on a separate carriage. Yeah, but there's no backlash in the focus itself. Oh, the backlash is only in the backlash in the rack. Yeah. yeah. Now this was built with very very heavy cameras. Mm. The idea was, and uh, you can there's a brake on there. You can adjust. But well, you that. need a lot of force to move it. Yes, yeah. Right, yeah. That's a dull rim um, cut a brake running on the other end of the spring. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, you can wind it in and out. Now, what you can't do is slow motion yet, because it's not that. Mm. But I think right on the fact that if it's pointing down the weight, will take the backlash out. Mm. Then so you, you can... Then you winding can uphill. Yeah, wind it in and it's very easy to wind. Yeah. I wrote this up for the PAA. And um, they can do that. Don't they? Mm. Yeah. I wrote this up for the PAA. They submitted the paper. And then they said, they said how do you do... Um, how do you do, yeah, very fine focusing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's honest. <laughs> uh, I'm, trying, I'm still working on it, I might probably won't, so it's just a, it's a curiosity item. I wouldn't go for it myself, because I've been making focuses that will take heavy weights anyway. Yeah, they do, I mean, I, yeah. I've got one, the one the, the Crayford I made, which has got similar size bearings yeah. to that. Yeah. And um, you, you you can put quite a lot of camera yeah, and bobber on the back. Idea, it doesn't yeah. slow the slump. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea, but uh, oh, so you no, don't no, need you don't need to. Mate. So you let's have a look around. The, the, yeah. the, the, obviously, right, the, let's start the heart the of the yeah. I um the band saw for cutting metal. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, that is an, I don't, I've had that for about, about twenty of year, years now, and I have to maintain it because you can't buy these. Anymore. No, no. And I've got metal cutting. Oh, I don't think that do they still make the the. the uh, it used to be what was it called? Uh, it's gone out of business years ago. But uh, I it's only a fairly light one, isn't it? But, but it's, oh, it's yeah, heavy yeah. enough for you. Oh yeah, yeah. It runs slowly. Yeah. You get the woodworking ones; it just burns the teeth off. Of yeah, of course it does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a run slow one. I tell you what, that stuff's good on good on it. That anchor lube I've used it on my bandsaw. I mean, if you're Which? cutting um, harder materials, it works really well. Oh, sorry, what are you talking You know, the lube stuff I sent you, this ankle. Oh, yes, that's, that, that yeah. is quite good. Because it sticks to the blade and it, and it, go, it makes it its yes, way around. Yes, it does, mm. yeah. Keeps yeah. your blades in reasonable order. Yes, I've used it, it's okay for tapping. It's good for tapping. Yeah, that's mm. what I use it for, tapping. And it's not oily, it's because it's a detergent-based thing. Yeah, it's soap. It's yeah. soap. It's but it does work really well. Based, mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the other way from doing all that grinding. Oh, uh, did well, the tapping yeah, the holes in the steel? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, yes. I am, um, but heavy duty machining on the lathe. Mm. So, so obviously, yeah, the lathe is the heart yeah. of the any workshop, of course. Tell yeah, us a bit. That's an old rivet lathe. It's, it's a rivet, is it? Yeah. It's oh, a, lovely. About 1918. 1918. Something like that, and um, it, uh, it's American. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's one thing that Americans do is make machine tools. Yeah. But uh, it's clapped out. They can't screw cut with it anymore. Is it? Is it <coughs> not? It's got too no. much uh, belt wear drive. in it, has it? Yeah. Uh, Flat but, belt, which is pre-war, obviously, isn't it? Oh or? no, I bought that um, back in Dartford about about 25 years ago. I went into into the. Uh, no, but flat it's belts, though everything was flat belt until the oh, war. Yes, the V belts were invented belts, during the war, very apparently. Good, very good. Yeah, well I quite like flat belts because if you if on a machine like this which isn't uh, massively heavy, when you yeah. get to the limit of the machine itself, Slip. the belt slips, which it is good. Off the poly. Yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. Which can drive you mad, of course. Well uh, you, what you do is you change your techniques. Yeah, you do. You do. That chuck I put on, that is a Vickers cast steel yeah. chuck. Right. Um, it's not very good. It keeps jamming up. Yeah. So I'll get over that one. Um, you got a four jaw as well, I assume. No. No, just the three. You just do everything the in the three. I can get on with the three. The jaws yeah. are adjustable. 
Oh, it's it's, it's not so a yeah, it's not self centric. Good as a horror drum, yeah, eccentric. Yeah. I've done that eccentric. Time. Oh, well, that so you can actually centre things in it. Oh, yes. you do that already. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's about uh, it's about one millimetre increments. Yeah. Oh, it's got it's not a nice carriage. It's uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is the screw cutting um, half nut engagement. Yeah. yeah, I took the blade screw out. Oh, that leaves with still in there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, so you do everything completely manually, you don't power oh, anything. Oh, you can mm. be, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you don't need self out to do it right at all. But the, um, the carriage comes loose. You can do that. Uh, you can do... Um, oh, that's nice. It's a quick yeah. release carriage. Yeah, you can take it off. Yes. Do something else. That's a very clever I've idea. never seen that before. Oh, no. no. Yeah, that is a museum piece. But it yeah. works. But it's broken, actually. The um, headstock shaft. In there, it's a bit fractured. Oh, has it? So it's running on, I like guess, stab. Mm -hmm. Oh, I oh, see, it's not coming right to the, to the end. Yeah, it's it actually, works. Yeah. It's still casual. Yeah. yeah. They're just plain bearings in here, are they? Oh, uh, they're cone bearings. Oh, are they? Well, that's yes. fancy. They're, 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 they're about, they taper about that much. Polished. Oh, um, lovely. Polished cast steel uh, running in a bronze book. It's a nice lathe. I've never really, yeah. um, you it's know, looked at it in detail before. Stone it's got dry. a very, very uh, nice bed, a yeah, substantial it's bed. Solid. Heavy duty cutter. It's a, actually, it's a tool maker's. It's a tool maker's lathe. Yeah. For which this would work. Yeah. yeah for, for its for its time, it must yeah. have been a very high end. Well, Rivetta are a very nice machine. Yes. It's all the um, I went to. I gave a lecture to the Modern Engineering, Engineering Society. Yeah. Oh, about about thirty years ago now, from the museum, the Boss by Department. I want you to talk about the new Crayford focus. Oh no, I built him um, a long skier terracore helichronometer uh, out of brass. Mm. Oh, I'll have a picture of it sometime. It's a, mm. so somebody else's design in the department, John Dix. And they said, Can you build a proper one for me personally? I said, Yeah, sure. This is just before I joined the museum. And it's a proper 19th century instrument maker job of all brass knobs. Lovely. And it's got a, it's got a, an analogue cam in it. Of the um, NLM, or equation of time, yeah. camera, and uh, when you, it's got a telescope tube on it with a um, a little screen and a pinhole in it, and you point the telescope to the sun, to the centre of the, the middle of the sun in the hole, and what it does when you rotate it to that position, it alters the uh, fiducial to the equation of time as it is to that day. Oh, nice. So you can read the time direct yeah. off the off the dial. Yeah. Well, that sounds really nice. Yeah. Analog computing to you. Yeah. And you did you, you did a talk. For that. That's this is what you did the talk at the engineering society. Yeah, I gave the uh, I gave, talked about that how mm. I made it, what it does, and everything. my workshop. And after it was finished, but I said you've got an old revet lathe. I said yeah. Oh, he says it, but I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> you're talking about it. Hey, what does he do? Yeah, yeah. I said, I swear, half of it's missing. I said, <laughs> but I'd make it sing and dance anyway. Mm. Yeah. So, did you cut the gears on it? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, there were some, there were gears, but it, it screw cut it very badly. No, I meant when you made the uh, um, equation of time it's calculator. It's got a cold gears from um, bronze gears from some other. Uh, oh, did you? Right. I yeah. Stuff to build it, really. I didn't know whether you did the the, the actual yeah, gear cutting uh, using yeah, a I, I using a sort of uh, <laughs> milling head on there or um, something. Yeah, my dad used to do that in the milling machine. Yeah. He had a special hob, uh, hob and used to do one tooth at a time on dividing. Yeah. yeah. My dad was a universal miller. Ah, a right. Top man, so he does he used to work on a machine where you know. They're all now computer controlled from Yeah, CNC they stuff. They did it yeah. by hand in those days. Yeah. And when he set up, he used to get out of the with this machine. He'd have to go through all these calculations. He'd have to set it up himself. And um, once he got all, all the parameters right, he'd, uh, he'd uh, go forward on the on dividing the head. Dividing head, yeah. yeah dividing plane. That's how I have to do it. It's, yeah. uh, it's good, it's good, good work with the dividing. You can, they're, 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 I like them, they're an interesting yes, device, yeah. you can do all yeah. sorts. But uh, So you don't you don't actually, um, you don't do any milling on, uh, on no. your own? Oh, yeah, I think you cut firm wheels, I think, because that's easy. Of course you do, yeah, yeah but that's just, you just run yeah. between centres yeah. there. Sure, yeah. uh, no, I, um, I don't bother to do screw cutting, I don't no. really like doing it anyway. What about your reckon pinions, do you buy that ready there? Oh, it came out of the X equipment. Ah. Yeah, I've got X equipment, yeah. I'm always on the lookout for optical 
stuff and, mm. and the hard use that. And I, uh, I recycle stuff yeah. design around it. Yeah? Well, having Why about the Soviet? The Soviet also has done it for you. Having renovated yeah. your 24 inch, we realise that there's a, quite a lot there's of, a lot uh, of recycled stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's how I build. What did that? The, the secondary uh, focus is a Picador pulley wheel. What, what, was the, what was it from? Do you know? It's just a Picador pulley wheel. Was a bolter. Oh, I see. You could you buy. Could, you could buy them. Used to sell blank pulleys. Yeah, I guess you buy blank, and you could buy the belts, and you could buy the small pulleys, the big pulleys, um, and you could buy um, travel blocks from them. And yes. Yeah. I didn't know whether it was from one right, of the machines, like a grinder or something like that. No, it was, it was, it was just right a grinder. Yeah. 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 The uh, cell that you threw away. Yeah. That's a brake drum out of a truck. It's, just, it's, it's a cast, pretty heavy. Truck <laughs> it's cast steel brake drum. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've saved quite a bit of light weight from the front bar. Oh, yeah, I yeah, know, so yeah, yeah that could be a good one. Replace a couple of those trusses, isn't it? We're trying to sort of miti minimise the number of yes, beer cans on the back. Yes, that's a good idea, I like what you're doing. Good, so yeah. what else have we got in the workshop? Uh, Obviously, well, more okay, hand we've tools. Got yeah. We've got um, the old problem. grinder. Yeah, I use um, high speed tea oil or tubes, not ceramics. Yeah, you know. I've got ceramics, they're for cutting glass. Yeah. Tube, uh, I haven't turned glass in the lady, you know. It. You know it. I haven't, no. Yeah, we use lots of water. Tools. Soap, water. Mm. soap and tools are a bit hard. So I've run my own tools and drills in there. And uh, I've got a saw for, for occasional woodwork I do. Yes. Uh, and this is, there's my old, my uh, three spindle Hindle. Uh, that's oh, that's your grinding machine. Grinding machine, mm -hmm. which I don't use anymore. I use this one. It's a self act I've built, I designed and built this myself from scratch. That is uh, my spindle grinder, and I built do all my small lenses. I could drop the cinch. OG is on. I don't want to connect it up. No, no, no. Have some lights on. <coughs> right, here we go. Take all this hamper off. Because, of course, it's mostly lenses these days, isn't it, rather than... Oh, yeah, I've gone totally over to the refractor. Yeah. Because I'm not interested in mirrors anymore. There's the, that's the radius arm. That looks like the same paint as the 24-inch. <laughs> that cream Could paint. Could very well be, I guess. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? There's um, the grinding tool. Oh, that's yeah. the grinding tool. That spins around about, about uh, 50 RPM. Oh, right. And, uh, and then, then it's uh, offset. I really offset it. The top tool spins around by kind of the friction. That sort of thing. I see. Yeah, so very clever. And it, you have to do that all the time. Well, I've got fed up with doing it, so I've got to fill up on it. Yeah. And this driver motor here. So that's it. Yeah, just a reduction for that. So you've got to. just does that. And everything is not synchronous. Ah, right. any synchronous here. Otherwise you, you, you wear uh, a pattern. Yeah, you put you, you get a pattern, a memory. Mm. Yeah, that works very well. You I see so you can just tweak the speed of this to uh, Oh yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's pretty good. Cool. This yeah. is where the uh, where I keep the, all the equipment for making pitch, for make boiling pitch. Oh yes, for the pitch for the and all the stuff for yeah. uh those uh, drawers there. That is optical store. Right. Optical central. Central, yeah. Although <laughs> keep, there's only some of it in there. There's, uh, so any old binoculars we send to you for dismantling for using in the bag down there. Have you got them? I've, I've still got them, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, for throwing away. Yeah, well that's right. If anyone's yeah, got any old them binoculars. Up the bandsaw. Yeah. No, they've got no compunction. No, exactly. It's but they've got good optics in them, prisms and mirror uh, and uh, prisms lenses. Are useless. They are fairly Absolutely, the, the yeah. roof the yeah, roof. Unless you use them in the configuration of this, but, but you can't use them as right angle prisms. No, you can't because they. Yeah, oh, right. Is that there's a, a problem? There's something wrong with the glass. Yeah. Wrong refractive in it. Mm. Anyway, um, so I don't. I chuck those right away generally. Right? And that's your that's your big grinder, which is more for that the is mirrors. The, that's basically. the uh, proper grinder. I grow. I've grow, I ground a, a twelve inch mirror on there. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's because it's clapping out. I've had a long time. And I very well might dismantle it, chuck it away, make some more room. All the grinding. Um, that's all your compounds, is it? Yeah, you can see the numbers written on yeah, it. You have the all the powders for polishing at the top and the rough grain down the bottom. It would be a bit stupid to have it the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would do that. Yeah, well, me probably. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't oh, until I realised. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of it is stored stuff. Grows, grows millions and millions of different kinds of You can see a sterret. Uh, 
packet there. What's in there? Something nice? Oh, what? Oh, it must be a, it's a, a, is it a saw for your bandsaw, the stereo. Oh, that's saw for the bandsaw. Yeah, nice quality saw oh, blade, yeah. stereo. Mm. Yeah. And again, Americans, they look good at tools. Although uh, that's probably made in Jedburgh. Could very well be, yeah. Yeah, because they've got a factory there, haven't they? Yeah, mm. that's right. And they, they've got a factory in China now of stereo, unfortunately. Yeah. They all have, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, they go good days. Just no, 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 no. mm. uh, a workshop. I can see a, a part of uh, one of your uh, high voltage generators up there oh, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's wooden stuff. Yeah. I'm rebuilding that later. You still making those then, or oh, renovating them? Occasionally, yeah. yeah. People ask for what I make. Mm. That's like a big them. scary one in this one. Oh, is there? Oh, oh yeah, so oh, there is. Yeah, that's a really big scary oh, that's one. That's the forty-nine inch. What sort of voltage did that one get up to? Uh, it's got a belt on it. Power goes around twenty minutes. Really? It can kill you. No. Yeah, be careful with a thing like that. Yeah. We stand near the one of the poles. And you can feel the electric field. It's like somebody gripping it. Really? Yeah. Just when you're near it? Yeah, when you're near it. And you look down at your feet in the dark and you've got this killing radiation coming out of your feet straight across the floor. Really? A blue corona just stuff. It's quite interesting for a while and then you realise that it's. Well, yeah, so you step away. <laughs> oh, I missed one right. of the most important tools in the whole shop, the vice. There you go. The vice is... Yep. A, that's a nice vice. Off. What is it? Is it a, it's a, it's a Paramo, I think, isn't it? Quick release guy, Paramo. Actually. Did it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got the maker's name on the side here. Oh, no, it's a... Hang on. Samsonia. Samsonia. Perfect. Never heard of it. Never, never no. Never I like. I haven't got a quick release vice. They're actually quite nice, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. And you've got that's aluminium jaws in it. The jaws you've got aluminium jaws. Yeah. Mm. That's a brutal engineer's vice. It's got steel cast steel jaws. Mm. Grip. Yeah, they're a bit vicious. Uh, that's a first. But I, I'm thinking of. I, I like soft jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Usually they're made of zinc and they keep falling out. I've got some uh, magnetic ones which are quite good. So with the, with felt yeah. pads on them, you just slip them on yeah. with, with magnets. Yeah. They're all right. doing delicate work. I mean. I work mainly in aluminium. Yeah. Well, I do principally. Yeah. I don't like steel at all. No, I, I, mean, I use it when I have to, but. Yeah. Uh, I discovered aluminium right back in my early, mm. my early um, telescope making days. But I could get hold of it, I guess. Yeah, because it's. Yeah. Back then it wasn't quite so commonly available, no, I mean, was it? I can only buy it by the ton now. You can, well, in fact, unfortunately, you have to. <laughs> yes. It's hard to buy in small quantities. Uh, yeah. Although, um, where, was it? where was I used to get it from? Um, Radio, radio spares, uh, or the um, mm. electro mail. They sell you small quantities. There is an outfit called uh, Metal Supermarkets, yes, and they've I got see. those around the place. Yeah. And you can go in there and buy as little as you like, but they're quite expensive. Well, it's all expensive. Mm. The metal prices have gone up. They have. Mm. The problem now, yeah. But they almost charge you. I mean, I bought some steel recently, and um, it comes in seven meter lengths of steel. Yeah. And I needed about four meters. So. Yeah. Uh, and, so I went to the Metal Supermarket and the price they gave me, I then went to the steel stockholder and it was the same price as Metal Supermarket but I got the whole seven metres whereas there they were just, they were only going to give me the bit. Off. Yeah. The piece of, so they piece. basically were charging me, you know, for the whole length anyway. So I bought the whole length. Oh well, yeah. And they chopped it up for me, so. Because I couldn't get it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get it in the car. Mm. Poked a hole in the windscreen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>